All right, here's problem one of the practice exam for forecasting, and this one is a cyclical trend. And what we mean by cyclical trend is something that's uh, a pattern that's showing up, but it's over multiple years. So if you consider each of these to be quarters, right, we have three years of data here. And so the pattern goes down and then starts to come back up again in this case. So things that might exhibit this demand pattern are the construction industry or infrastructure investment, things that take a long time to, to uh, get funding in place for or to complete. And so they might, uh, if there's the right conditions are in place, you might uh, have a lot of financing available or programs to support infrastructure development. It takes some time to, to start up and then they cycle downward as they get completed and then the investment uh, cycle might begin again. Likewise, with enterprise technology, new technologies get in place, so businesses start buying those, putting them in place, and then after a while, those uh, drop off because all the businesses have uh, completed that, and then they will use those investments up and uh, then need to invest again in a new set of technology, uh, either hardware or software or both. All right, so that's a cyclical trend. So how do we uh, forecast something like the next slide here? And so what we would need to do there uh, the first thing that we want to want to do is compute uh, our average of the period. So we had 12 periods here. The total uh, in the practice exam for these uh, this example is 8450. We divide by 12, and our average then is 704. Okay. So then we um, we divide our period uh, quantity by our historic average, as is shown here and come up with an index value. So uh, in this period 1, 1144 is 1.62 times the historical average is how you could think about that. Right? And you just repeat that across for the six periods we need to forecast. So we've got an index value for each of those. And then what we do for our forecast right here is we multiply the historic average by the index. And what we then get is this row here, which is our forecast for the six periods. And so what you would get if you continue to apply this index over, you know, say you could do it over 12 periods like we were given, um, that then the demand would just continue up and down like that at the same level. Now, if you know something uh, is changing or will change or you suspect it will, you could build that into the forecast, whether it's an increase or a decrease, and apply that to your value. Uh, so if you happen to know something uh, or think you know something, then you can adjust in that way. But this index will allow you to just repeat that pattern um, uh, over time as you forecast ahead. All right, so let's look at the uh, forecast, and that is the stable trend. And so we've got, we've got some fluctuations here, right? We wouldn't expect it to be exactly the same over again. We've got our three years of data here. And uh, so what we've got is relatively minor fluctuations over time. And so something with, uh, with an established demand pattern might, might exhibit this. There might be slight uh, increases or decreases, but, but pretty stable use, right? There's sort of an established market and size of market, and there's not really necessarily growing. Um, but there might be you know, minor changes, whether it's a, some sale or something like that. Uh, some uh, uh, product improvement might drive some more additional demand, but then it kind of comes back to where it, where it traditionally has been. Um, so that's a stable trend, so again, relatively minor fluctuation. This one is very easy. We just take the average of our 12 periods, uh, as we did in, our, in the cyclical demand, but in this case, we just take that average value and drop it into our forecast. And so, um, again, this is something that if you happen to know um, or suspect that there's something that might change, you could adjust upward or downward by some value as long as you have some rationale for that. But a, a pretty safe uh, forecast would just be to repeat the average value going forward, and you should be within some relatively minor variance of the actuals uh, if that's your uh, true demand. All right, now on demand. In contrast to the stable demand, the seasonal trend requires uh, quite a few more calculations, but they're pretty straightforward. It's just sort of a, a process of doing it, and we'll walk through that in a second. But again, here we see, if we've got our three years of data here, we see the same, uh, <clears throat> same general pattern here, right, over the three years, but it's increasing over time, right? So 
the first pattern, uh, or the first uh, year, I should say, has the same pattern as the second year, but it's always increasing here um, uh, over the four quarters. So if we look at this as quarters one, two, three, and four of a year, third quarter has the most demand, right, in each of the, in the years, um, and, uh, and then it drops off in, in quarter four. And so we see a repeating pattern here over years, and what we've got uh, examples of that would be seasonal events um, are driving sales potentially, and that could be um, whether it's uh, sort of induced by the business based on when and, and the timing of the release of their products, or it could be a seasonal business uh, we talked about in class, landscaping or ski resorts or things like that that might have a big time of the year just based on, um, on the way the, the business works. Um, and then it drops off over the uh, other periods of the year. Um, all right, so uh, how do we calculate that? So here, so the first thing that we need to do is organize, um, organize the data. And so what you see here now in the in the example in class, we've got periods one through twelve, one right after the other. But here we stack them, right? So we've got periods one, two, three, and four. So we create columns for years one, two, and three, and we we'll calculate the average for each of those. Right, so we've got an average for quarter one, two, three, and four for each of the years. And um, so that's the first step. We organize the data and then calculate an average for quarters one, two, three, and four. And then um, from that then, and you see these, these values drop down into this next table right here. The average for those quarters, you know, we take an average of, of all of those values, of uh, the sum of 627, plus 769, plus 908, plus 683, and divide that by 4, and that gives you this grand mean right here, 747, okay? And then uh, we take that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we take the, the, uh, the average for each period, in this case, the one that's circled here, 627 over 747 is 0.84, right? This is the index value for quarter 1. 1.03 is the quarter uh, index value for quarter two, and so on across here. And so you just divide the average by the grand mean to come up with the index. Now, if you've done the calculations right, those will sum to four, right? Because you've got four periods here. So if there were flat demand over the four periods, right? These each index value would be one, and uh, it would just be like a flat demand of of the average across there. But in this case, that's not what we've seen, right? We've seen, as we mentioned, this quarter three, we called out on the previous slide, is the biggest quarter, and that's almost 25% larger than the average, right, 0.22. And so uh, these are your index values, again, just the average divided by your grand mean. Um, and then, uh, so we've got that, so we've got our index values for our four quarters during the year, and then we need to know is what is our growth rate, because if you recall in our in our example, the pattern we saw continued up each time, right? And so we need to know what the increase is going to be to forecast for the year. And so we take up here, if you recall, or we didn't mention this yet, but here we've got totals for years two and three. So you can see what the uh, growth rate will be. What you would do is you divide then year three total by year two, and then that tells you what your, what your growth is, so 1.25. So you multiply then year three by 1.25, and you get this forecasted growth for year four of 4592. And then you take 4592 times 1.25, and you get your year five projection of 5741. Okay, so again, you just multiply um, year three by 1.25, and that will give you your year four forecast. Um, and then you take both of those values, your 4 and your 5, and you divide by 4 so that you know what your quarterly demand is. If you had flat demand, if you were to take that projected growth for year 4 and divide by 4 and say that, then we would, to get to that value, in the case of year 4, we would have 1148 for each of the four quarters, right? And that's shown right here. That, of course, is not our forecast because we don't have a flat forecast. We have one that grows and peaks in Q3, and so we then multiply the year four totals by the index values right here, okay? And then we get um, the projections for periods one through four, 964, 1182, 1396, and 1050, right? So you can see 
if we were to plot that it would go just like the uh, the uh, shape of our pattern uh, based on the index okay and so then that gives us four periods but we have to forecast six so we need to get into our year five projections so again we take our average for year five projections 1435 and then apply the index and we come up with the, the next two here 1205 and 1477 so then if you take those all together you end up with six periods of forecast here um, right so we just carry these values here and here down into the into the forecast for the six periods all right last uh, type of forecast is the linear trend okay this could be upward or downward in this case we've got a positive trend positive upward trend um, over time and so um, it, businesses experiencing strong growth or adoption rates will continue to grow like this um, and so past examples might be tablet computers or cloud computing as people adopt those the growth rate continues sort of up and to the right um, streaming services for videos might be another one that's sort of in this phase today um, and uh, and so you know things don't continue like this indefinitely typically anyway um, but uh, this is a uh, uh, at least a, a successful business some period of time should look like that uh, as, as you uh, get more and more users adopting the, the product or service. Now to calculate the linear trend, and you might have thought that this reminds you of the uh, linear regression work that we did in chapters 14 and 15. And so the first thing you need is to calculate the linear regression equation. And that was what we saw on the, um, on the chart, right, is that. And with the piece of, of, of the linear regression equation that you need is in bold here, this 40.259. That is our... Um, the increase uh, that you would expect each for each one unit increase um, in your uh, on your horizontal axis, which is our periods. Um, and so, with this forecast type, then what we will do is we'll take the last period of known uh, demand, which is tw period twelve, and that was eight fifty nine, and then we will add. And I've just rounded to forty here. We add forty to that. So then our first forecast value is eight ninety nine, and we just continue to do that for each of the six periods here is we continue to add 40 to each of those and that will continue our upward uh, projection. All right, and that's it for the practice exam.